All right, in this segment, I will be looking at a physical example from the practice. So here's what the question reads. Let's say that I have a 30-story residential building, okay? And I gave you the height of it, 42 feet is a typical height, okay? And obviously we have different kinds, all sorts of pipes inside of this building for freshwater purposes, right? So let's say that I'm using one inch diameter and schedule 40, okay? So schedule 40 is a type of a PVC pipe, okay? There's also schedule 80, which is higher quality, and the maximum operating pressure of schedule 40 one inch diameter PVC pipe is 270 psi, okay? That's fairly high as well, just want you to realize, okay? And let's assume that the flow rate of water in the pipes are 0 0.005, feet cube per second, okay, CFS is feet cube per second. And I also converted for your convenience, this will be 2.2 .2 gallon per minute, okay, fairly standard. Determine the maximum length of pipes that can be used if you neglect the minor losses, okay. So obviously you can make this question a lot, lot more complicated, you can include a bunch of different bends, minor losses. It's not a huge deal. It's not going to make the mathematics much more complicated. But I want to just focus on how much if I have a straight pipe, long pipes, right? How long is it going to be? I have 42 feet high. If I start with a pressure, am I going to be ending maybe 100 feet? I will be bursting the pipe or not, right? So we'll find that out in this particular question. Okay, first thing is I need to Kind of imagine what am I doing over here, okay? This is fairly vague and open-ended question that I posed, right? So let me think about that for a minute here, okay? So obviously the equation I have will be this, P1 over specific weight plus P1 squared over 2G plus Z1, right? Plus HP power input will be equal to P2 over specific weight plus V2 squared over 2g plus z2 plus hl major. Please note that hl minor, I'm neglecting the effect of it, okay, is zero. That's given to me in the question statement. Now the big question is, what am I going to call as one? What am I going to call as this? two? Okay. Again, this is up to you, but I'm going to do this. Okay. I'm going to say that. Let's say that this is the ground floor, and this is the thirtieth floor. And I'm just, let's say, this is my datum, right? And I'm going to have uh, point 0.1 over here. And I'm going to have point 0.2 over here because I will be lost. And this will be the maximum, right? And this height, the z difference from here to here, as the question suggests, let's take it as 42 feet all the way to the peak, okay? Just as a starting point and see what happens from here, okay? So if I do this. You will see that my z1 will be equal to 0, my z2 will be equal to plus 42 feet, right? And pressures. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I will force my pressure value to be maximum over here. So I'm going to have 270 psi, okay? And obviously, this is extreme case. Right, I'm talking about the D extreme case, and I'm gonna go to the D extreme case where at the peak of it, the pressure reaches the zero. Obviously, this is not uh, realistic because then there will be no water pressure, right? But I'm taking the extreme cases to see how long it will be okay. All right, so I was able to accomplish one thing here as well, okay? So I get my P1 and P2 is gone, Z1 is gone. Let's look at the velocities. Well, it says that one inch constant diameter pipe, right? So I can find my V and I actually need to find the V, but V1 will be equal to V2, right? Because this is just a one inch constant pipe. I'm just looking at this component, right? So then V1 will be equal to V2. Again, I will find this value, I have to, but for now, I will simply get rid of it, right? Okay, so so far I have accomplished a lot. Let's think about HP. Well. The pump that I connected this from the main, water main, will be over here, right? It's not going to be between 1 and 2. Ground level of the building to the top of the building, there will be no pumps, okay? 
in my design. So then this HP will be zero. Okay, so it really depends. If you want to include the horsepower and all, that's a different story. You need to pick different point one and point two. This is not the way I'm. This is the way I am doing it. Okay. All right. So then let's write a few things. Now I'm actually fairly ready to insert these numbers into my equation. So okay. So it's two hundred seventy. I'm writing P one. Two hundred seventy psi. The trick about British gravitational systems is. It is pan per square inch, not feet, and the rest of everything that you will see will be in feet, so I have to convert it. And what is the conversion between PSI to PSF? PSF is uh, pound per square foot. So I'm going to multiply by 144 inch square is equal to one foot square, right? So from here I will get myself a PSF, all right? Then I'm going to divide by the specific weight. The water will be 62.4. It's going to be pound per feet cube, right? And this will be inch square by feet square, right? The right hand side, what I do have, first I'm gonna have Z2, which is 42, right? And then I will have FL major. And the FL major will be, I'm just gonna write it like this, F L over D, V square over 2G. All right, now let's look at what I know, what I don't know, okay? From this, as you can see, the only thing that I do not know over here is this term, right? Do I know the velocity? Well, I don't know it at this point, but I can, right? I'm given my volumetric flow rate in terms of feet cube per second, right? So from here, I can find my velocity. That's fine. All right, good. Diameter of the pipe is known. Length, actually, that's what I'm being asked to find. But now I have to find the F value as well. So let's go and do that, okay? In order to find the F value, now I need to go through this process of finding Reynolds, epsilon over d, right? If this is turbulent, obviously. If this is laminar, I'm just going to get 64 over Reynolds. So now, the key thing to do is to find my Reynolds number, okay? So let's write over here, Reynolds number is equal to rho v d over nu, right? Okay, rho, I will find from a chart, that part is fine. Uh, velocity, I need to find it, okay, from the Q, so I have to do this process. D is one inch, right? And the viscosity is also a number from a chart that is applied to me. So Q is equal to V times A, right? Q was given to me as 0 0.005 feet cube per second, right? Will be equal to velocity that I'm after. And the area is one inch, so it's going to be pi over four, right? One over 12. Why did I write one over 12, not just one? Because it's in feet, right? So I converted to feet square, okay? And from here, I will get myself my V as 0 0.92 feet per second. So far, so good. So now let's go ahead and calculate my Reynolds number. So Reynolds number will be equal to rho. The density of water, I'm just going to take a nominal value for it. Okay. And that will be 1.94 slug per feet cube, right? That is the density of water in British gravitational. The velocity is, you just find it, 0 0.92, right, feet per second, okay, good. Diameter is going to be 1 over 12, again, in terms of the foot, right, it's going to be foot divided by the viscosity, and the viscosity is 2.34 times 10 to the minus 5 pound second per feet square. And from here, you will find your Reynolds number is right around 6,300 Let's call it 50, okay? Anyways, in the chart, I can't be that specific. I accomplished that this is 6,356. So can I ignore the effects of turbulence and uh, treat this as a laminar? So I can just simply go ahead and write 64 over 6,350. No, it's not the best approach at all, right? Because it's clearly the turbulence effects needs to be accounted for. The other uh, component is epsilon over D. So now I have to go ahead and find it. What is epsilon for PVC? Well, it is assumed that it is smooth, so I'm going to take that as zero, right? That's a fairly reasonable assumption. Let's go ahead and read the Darcy friction factor from the Middle East chart or diagram, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and find my F value. I want to just simply go ahead and write it over here. It's 6350, comma, zero, right? That is epsilon over D. First thing to note here is that this is the smooth pipe, okay, this blue line that you see over here. So that's the line that I'm going to go over. 
The other thing is I need to find my now my Reynolds number. Okay, so let's take a look here. This is thousand. This is ten thousand, right? So I'm between those two. One thousand, two thousand, three, four, five, and six. So I'm a little bit above that value. Okay, six right over here. Okay, so if I continue this line, I will get something like this, and bam, I hit over here. Then I will go ahead and draw a line like this, right? And this is the value that I should read. Noting that it's a log log scale, I'm going to read this as 0 0.033. Okay, now I can go down. As you've seen, from here, I got myself an f is equal to a fraction of 6350, 0, and that number turned out to be 0 0.033. Good. So then I can go back up to my equation. Now I know this 0 0.033. What is the unit of f? It's unitless, right? Um, D is 1 over 12, right? G is, in the British gravitational, it's going to be 32.2, .2, right? And the velocity that I get is 0 0.92. So if you look at, here at this particular equation now, only unknown that I have is L. So then I will go ahead and find my L value, okay? So from this equation, I do get my L value. And if I go down and write it for you, I will get my L as 111,600, let's say, ish um, feet, right? That's the unit of it. Feet. Huh. So that's fairly long, right? If you notice. So I can even convert this to miles, right? As one mile is equal to 5,280 feet, okay? If I convert this to miles, I'll get myself L is equal to 21.1 .1 approximately miles. So what do, I, do we understand from this problem? Okay, number one, is that realistic? Well, I didn't really completely ignored the effect of bands, T's, valves, all these minor losses. I'm just talking about the one pipe that is going straight up. Okay, the point still stays though. This 21.1 .1 miles is a huge length, right? So it is never going to be a problem um, if you're concerned about using a PVC pipe in a residential tower, as I mentioned, a 30 floor or much higher than that as well. However, you may want to be careful because I assume 270 psi at the floor 1 and I assume 0. That's not quite realistic, so you may need to adjust it. Also, one more item that you need to know, there's always safety factors in these pipes. I said the maximum operating pressure is 270 psi, right? But from the manufacturer, the expectation is the minimum burst pressure is actually 1,440 psi. 